turn with the second Corinthians chapter 6 starting in verse 14 when you have it say amen and the word of God says don't team up with those who are unbelievers just hold what you got I'm going to teach you how can righteousness be a part with wickedness that's a question Apostle Paul is asking the Corinthian church he's correcting it he asks how can righteousness be a partner Watch the verbiage and the words that the, the New Living use. How can it be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? Verse 15 says, and what harmony, going off for Christ and guess, what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? These are questions, hmm, come on somebody, that the man of God is asking the church. How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? I'm going to clarify that for you, so just hold what you got. And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. And God said, I will live in them and walk among them. God is on the inside. The kingdom of heaven is within. And I will be their God and they will be my people. Verse 17 says, therefore, come out from among unbelievers. And separate yourselves, separate yourselves, separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. This is God speaking through Apostle Paul, church, my God, to the church. God says, separate yourselves from them, saith the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will come, and I will welcome you. And I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Father, 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 thank you. Woo, Lord, thank you. Just deliver. Just encourage. Just reveal. Save souls. Strengthen the body. Protect the body. Help us to get clarity and revelation, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated now. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Somebody give God a hand for the reading of the word. A yoke. Please get your notepads out and your iPhones and take some notes and stuff. A yoke, a yoke, a yoke. You know, for the last few weeks I was talking about uh, a wounded spirit. Y'all remember that sermon? Yeah. Then our spirit of God talked about uh, godly soul ties and ungodly soul ties and and all that type of stuff. God is really working on the inside this last month and some change of the people of God. And now we're getting ready to deal with something. But I'm just so thankful that God is building line upon line and precept upon precept. It is my heart desire, everybody, my God, that God does an internal work inside of each and every one of us. Please, when you walk with Christ, those that profess to be Christians and really born again believers, you want God to work on the inside of you not just the outside of you. Don't just change your clothes and fix your hair and cut your hair, but on the inside you are still tore up from, as we say, from the floor. You want God to do an internal work on the inside of you. The healthier you are, my God, the more you will be able to enjoy your walk with Christ. Let me say that one more time. The healthier you are, the more you will be able to enjoy, I'm going to even say benefit from your commitment and your work relationship with Christ. Many people, y'all, are not benefiting from coming to church, even reading their Bible. Because when you read the Bible, you got to allow the Word of God to deal with you. You got to allow the Word of God to shift you, to turn down and uproot. The Bible says, my God, that God gave the, the Word through Jeremiah. He was supposed to turn down and uproot. My God, turn down and uproot. My God, there's some word that would turn down, and then there's some word that would build back up. Come on, somebody. And so we have to be towed down and built back up. It never stops. God don't never stop doing surgery when you got a real yes down in your soul. Oh, my God. And so a yoke is something that links and joins or locks two things. Oh, my God, in place. This is heavy, Sharon. A yoke is something that links and joins or locks two things in place so that one cannot move without the other. Mm. Most often we see yokes used on teams of oxen or horses. One result in yoking animals together is that their, that their, that, that their combined strength is multiplied. 
when you yoke oxen together, or horses, oxen together, and horses together. Oxen, and then horses. Not oxen, horse. Oxen, boy, y'all better stand. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oxen with oxen, let me help you understand, and horse with horse. My God, then the strength is multiplied. A yoke can also mean a bond that is oppressive and or burdensome. So the title of the sermon is be careful what you're yoked to. So be careful what you are yoked to. Be careful. Come here, Dion. Come here, Henry. Come up here, son. Y'all lock arms together. Just come, you know, like we would do. Just, just lock arms. Now, watch this. It said the yoke is something that links. These two men are linked together in joints or locks two things in place so that one cannot move without the other. So, Henry, you go to the left. Try to go to the left. Go ahead. Try it. Now, try to pull it. Don't let him move, uh, Dion. And see, he's down. He's so strong, he ain't got to do nothing. <laughs> now, 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 now. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Give it to me, God. Give it to me. Come on, Henry. Do it again. Do it again. Try to move. See, he's yoked. He's joined. Get this image, y'all. Come on, y'all follow me now. Get this image. Get this image. Come on, one more time, son. Now, Dion, move, move to the right. <laughs> now, what you just witnessed right there is so simplistic, yeah. but yeah. very revelational and powerful. Yeah. Because the one that was the strongest won. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even though they was enjoined, even though they was yoked together, my God, both of them is men, both of them is, is males, should be moving to men. Come on, somebody. I can't get nobody to say nothing, but the strongest one, Sharon, won. Go to your seat. Thank y'all for that. Let's get them a hand for that. So, 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 my God, let me put some scripture on there, Pastor Ron. The Bible says, whichever one you feed, whichever one you yield to between the flesh and the spirit, that's the one, that is your master. Yeah. Whichever one you feed, if you feed your spirit, your spirit will be stronger than your flesh. If you feed your flesh on all this entertainment, my God, you don't never read, you don't never pray. My God, everything you hang around is worldly. All the worldly music and stuff you listen to, when temptation come in your life, you ain't got nothing to fight with, baby. Oh, my God, if you ain't allow God to transform and renew your mind, you ain't ready to rage war. And if you go to this church, thank you Holy Ghost, and if you're a member of this church and you attend this church on a consistent basis, if you're not growing in the dark, if you're not flipping the pages, if you're not serious about your commitment and dedication to Christ, you will be picked off in this church. Because there's major warfare going on in this ministry. Why? Because the type of word is being preached, my God. And the enemy don't want you free. He don't cut nothing about you going to church, my God, like many of you have for many, many years. But when you start getting free, internal, here he come. When you start making a difference, when your self-esteem change, when your self-confidence come up, come on. When, your, when, you, when God remove fear out of your life and stuff like that, when you start conquering it instead of it conquering you, the enemy become terrified of you. Many, for many, many years, the enemy ain't been terrified of none of us, my God. But when you make a real yes down in your soul, when you start shifting and reading, my God, I promise you, here come the enemy. And so it's not good to be a part of this ministry. Why would you talk like that, Pastor? Because I love you enough, my God, whether I know you or don't know you. It's dangerous to be in this ministry, my God, and not be serious about God because it's going to be frustrated and you're going to get picked off and you're going to be offended and you're going to be sticky, my God, because you're not growing and the devil is whooping you all up. Because this is real warfare. This ain't the place to come do church. We don't do church. We do Right. We don't do church, we do. Right. Church don't change you, homie. Christ changed you. Yeah. 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 Oh my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing. And that's why many people, thank you, Holy Ghost. That's why many people, my God, that profess to be Christians, my God, is so frustrated with no power because they've been exposed to church and not Christ. Yeah. It's my job as a pastor, my God, it's my job, Pastor Ron, as a pastor, to make sure I use this platform, my God, to get everybody in here to Christ. Yeah. It's, to, it's my job to get you vertical, not horizontal. Yeah. When you take care of the vertical, it's easy to mess with you horizontal. Yeah. When you right up here, my God, you'll be right right here. You can't be right up here, my God, and be unright right here. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Or unrighteous right here. Let me say it like that. You can't say, God, forgive me, and you don't forgive nobody this way, baby. It's like this, baby. It's like this. It go like. Oh, I'm sorry. So what has you today? Let's look at this. Look at your point number one. Put yoke on the screen. I want my children up in it because I need to pay attention. And so, my God, Dion, make sure you pay attention to my babies. I ain't trying to put them on blast, but to my mentors over there, pay attention to my babies because they need to hear this. My God. And just like they need to hear it, we need to hear it. Because some of us can't move forward because we yoke to the things that, mm, that don't want us to move forward. It don't want to let you go. 
I was yoked to gang banging. I was yoked to crack. I can't get nobody said he didn't want to let me go until God interrupted with a powerful force. See, some things that's negative got to be interrupted by a powerful force. Oh, you ain't got no power. My God, you trying to overcome the flesh, but you ain't got no power. Some things ain't going to be broken, Brother Derek, until God interrupted. It yeah. takes a powerful force. Yeah. Pastor Paul was on his way to kill Christian, and it took God, my God, for Paul to have a head on collision with, 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 with God for him to change. Yeah. Paul had to have a head on collision with God. Couldn't nothing change. T.D. Jakes couldn't preach Pastor Paul to salvation in Janice. Bishop Noel Jones couldn't preach Apostle Paul to salvation. Benny Hinn couldn't prophesy no healing to Apostle Paul. Paul had to meet God himself. Some of you, my God, things ain't going to change you. You had a head-on collision with God. And you better be careful when you start saying, God, give me a head-on collision because here he come. And some of us don't want to pray that because we don't want to change. We'll do church to clear our conscience, but we don't want to change. Some of us think that if we come to church, we closer to God. That don't mean you closer to God because you in church. You got people that don't go to church more close to God. I can't get no money. Oh, this feel good. So let's look at this. Let's talk about yokes. Here we see Paul. Let me, let me bring some balance to what I just read. Here we see Paul links the words. I want you to write these words down. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me show down. Because we need to really understand. As I was putting this together, God was really speaking to me and showing me, my God, the danger of yoking, being enjoined, being locked up with stuff and things. Don't you know the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord, my God, the Bible said the enemy bound Jesus. Whatever has you bound leads you. The Bible says they bound him and then they led him to be crucified. They bound our Lord and Savior, Patrice, and then they led him. First, they had to bind him. They had to tie him up and wrap him all up. Come on, somebody. They had to, they had to beat him down. Come on, say, once they bound him, my God, then they led him. Whatever has you bound is leading you. It could be some naturally or it could be some spiritually. Don't you know you could be bound even spiritually? Fear, unbelief, doubt. Low self-esteem, lack of confidence, all of those type of stuff. Whatever has you bound leads you. And whatever also has you bound has your attention. Yeah. Whatever voice you, whatever voice is the loudest, that's the voice you. Mm-hmm. What voice is really loud? Is God's voice loud or is it the world? Is it Facebook? Is it Instagram? Is it drugs, sex, and all of those stuff? Whatever has you bound leads you. That's a heavy, heavy revelation right there. They bound him, kindled, and led him. Again, I'm saying this as I move. What, else, what has you bound tonight? Some of you already know. Some of the things that already has you bound. And when they say move, you move. When they say stop, you stop. That's a cold place to be in. Ooh, Lord. That's a soul, my God. And then when you want to come out, and you wrestling Pastor Teresa to come out, and you warn my trying to come out, you try to fight, but that thing just every time you sense that you got some momentum, it bleh. My God, every time you get some power, you come up here, you feel good. My God, are you really trying to go hard? My God, who my God, and it just mm. some of you sitting beside certain men. They say when you see you go up there, they say, "I oh, look at you. I just wait till I get you home. It's all good." Bow by the perception of some man. Yoked. Yoked. Common, write down common. Write down the word fellowship. Write down the word harmony and write down the word agreement. Here we see Paul link these words, yoked, common, fellowship, harmony, and agreement together. So the things that has you bound right now that's in your mind, the things that you're thinking about right now, either you yoke to it and you have a common fellowship with it. Come on, you're in harmony with it. Don't you know we can, mm, don't you know our sins can feel good to us? Some of us is allowing the enemy, my God, complete harmony within our minds. The enemy just come up into the attic of our mind and just rest. The enemy. Harmony. We're making harmony with our flesh. Really, you can't really real have real harmony. You're really miserable, but you're covered up through all that stuff, my God, to self-medicate. This is real good. This is real good, my God. Uh, uh, harmony and, and agreement. The, watch this. A yoke can mean agreement on mindsets. Agreement on mindsets. Uh, agreement in mindsets. Don't you know you have to agree with the enemy to allow the enemy to dominate your life? You have to agree with the enemy to allow the enemy to dominate your life. Not her. You have to agree with the enemy. You have to give the enemy legal permission. 
to dominate your life. You know why? Because God gave every believer, watch this, who didn't even authority over the enemy. And when you release, my God, that authority into the enemy, you're giving him legal permission to terrorize your life. And so why is everybody blaming the devil? I said the devil. No, the devil ain't made you do it. You gave your authority to the devil. You gave your allegiance to God to the enemy. You gave your dominance that God gave you over the earth, Genesis 1, 26. You gave it to the enemy. And you wonder why things ain't working right. You giving away your authority. You got control over the enemy. The kingdom of heaven is within you got to learn how to tap into that, my God, that inner strength. You got to learn how to tap into that inner man. You got to learn how to draw, my God, out of your well. That's why you got to, my God, when you go to the bank, you got to have some money off of us so you can get a withdrawal. Many of you can't, my God, withdraw nothing from God because you ain't put nothing in there. And so when temptation comes, you quit. You tap out. You give in. And you keep talking about God know my heart and God going to forgive me. And you run down and you cry about the same old stuff that you ain't willing to make a shift about. You got to have a paradigm shift, my God, about those things. If you don't shift your mind, you'll go right back to the very thing that led you to the, my God. That's why people stay in abusive, abusive situation because they, my God, it's painful. And they know it's painful. And they want out, my God. But they mind ain't, my God, won't let them out because they yoke, my God, to that. Oh, my God. Some of them are scared that if I leave, he's going to kill me, my God, because he's going oh, my God. I'm in there, I'm in there, I'm in there. Yeah, yeah. You got to have a paradigm shift of that stuff. This is not going to be broken in your life. Yeah. That's why we fight the same old battles week after week after week after week. Because we'll cry about it and shout about it and even have people to come in agreement with us about it. Don't you know that I can have Pastor Teresa and these women of God come up here and agree with you and they can touch and agree, but if you don't shift your mind, the very thing they just agree with you about will not change in your life. So why quit running to the altar if you ain't ready to shift and change? Because all you're doing is hurting yourself and frustrating yourself and now you're thinking God don't work and this church stuff don't work. Now it works, you just ain't working it. My God. Mm, mm, mm. Mindsets that are evidence in our lifestyle. Paul is telling the Corinthian church, Paul is telling the Corinthian church uh, uh, and us not to be joined, not to yoke together in body, write this word down, body, mind, or spirit with unbelievers. I'm going to clarify this now. Don't be yoked. Remember what yoke is, joined and locked. If you are more comfortable with hanging around people that's un. Something's wrong with your profession as a man or woman of God. If you still, my God, been serving God for any length of time, and you could, and, and Lil Wayne with all this old stuff, yeah. whatever, plows or whoever, these people, these, what is these rap people? My, if all that stuff, oh my God, if you find yourself listening to all that old stuff, more than you, and you don't even have no desire, when you hear the gospel, my God, it don't even do nothing for you. But soon you turn on all that old mess, my God, you get motivated, you get energized, that's demonic. That is demonic! Yeah. It's demonic. Yeah. Listen to all the worldly stuff right there. That's demonic. Yeah. And don't you know, my God, who, oh my God, the, the, the chief uh, uh, worshiper was a, is the devil. Yeah. That's why music is demonic. Yeah. That's why you got to be careful what you're hearing. I'm going to be dealing with you next week about vows and public vows and stuff like that. My God, you got to be careful what you're hearing. My God, the Bible, Jesus said, not I, but Jesus said, consider what you're hearing. Be careful what you're hearing. Be careful what you're lending your ear to. Be careful who you're lending your ear to. Some of y'all is, is listening to people that, that was once planted here, my God, but for some reason they got offended or whatever it was, and they left, and you listening to them, and they slowly and slowly uprooting you. Be careful, because the enemy got divine strategy to destroy you. Yeah. Who in my life got to suffer while I yeah. remain the same? The enemy's out to destroy you, my God. He don't care who he used. The Bible says the enemy will pray as an angel of light. He will look just like one of us. They'll come sit for three or four years. They'll come sit for three or four years, then it's time to go. And when they leave, they want to take four, five, six people. It's warfare. It's warfare, so be careful who you and what you're listening to. Be careful what you're joined to. My God, if somebody that used to go to this ministry, my God, is always talking negative about people in the ministry and this and that in the ministry, but they ain't in church no more and they ain't living nothing, why you keep listening to that? Yeah. Yeah. That's my home, girl. <laughs> but you listen to people that's contaminated and all the enemy is doing has a divine strategy to contaminate you. Yeah. 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 You're here, but you ain't here. You're yoked together, my God, with contamination. Lord, help my mind. Oh, my God. He states, Paul states, have nothing in common. There is no compatibility or equality, my God, in our lifestyles with unbelievers. I'm going to, I'm going to clean it up for you. There is no compatibility. 
If you go to talk to them about things of the, of the word, pleasure, and, and they don't know nothing about God, my God, unless they want to invite you in to want to learn about God. But if we just hang around people that ain't thinking about God and you know they ain't thinking about church, they ain't thinking about, I don't want to do no church. I don't want, but you steady trying to hang around. You steady trying to give them God and they don't want it. All you're doing is casting your pearls among swine. Yeah, yeah. And, but yet, them is the same people you keep going to. There's other fish in the pond. If they don't want it, shake the dust off their feet and push. Be careful, my God. What common fellowship? What common, common fellowship, my God, do, 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 do you have with unbelief? Why is it so convenient and so comfortable for you to talk to Christ, my God, and hang around and talk about Christ, my God, to unbelievers, but you won't talk about Christ to believers? Yeah. Listen to what I said. It's convenient for you to talk to unbelievers about Christ because they ain't going to ask you nothing. But a Christian going to say, okay, I hear you talking about where your lifestyle at. My God, yeah, yeah, we're going to talk to some unbelievers because they don't know nothing to ask us. But some do and some don't. I'll take that back, my God. But you talk to somebody, my God, that you're supposed to be yoked together with as a believer, they're going to say, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but where you been? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that word again? Say it again. Accountability. Accountability. See, we'll run to that. Which, we, 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 we will run to that which puts no accountability in our life. Yeah. We will yoke to that which don't put accountability in our life. And we will run from someone who does put yeah. accountability yeah. Yeah. in our life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pastor, I love you, but I'm an alpha male. <laughs> and so in order for you to love me, you got to love the alpha male in me. Yeah. 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 And if you don't want to be an alpha male, a real one, on. see what I'm saying, you're not going to like me. You're going to get offended with me and leave because you really don't want to be an alpha male. You want to be able to do what you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it. Yeah. See what I'm to say? I'll just drop some on you, Pastor Ron, for the men. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm looking at some people. They don't understand it. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. My God. There's no common. There's no compatibility with righteous and unrighteous, y'all. Our lifestyles. Lifestyles mean fellowship. Somebody write down. Lifestyle and in parentheses put fellowship. Are different. Our lifestyle. That means our fellowship is different. Watch this. Our thought life is different. In parentheses, right? Harmony. How can you have harmony with an unbeliever who don't understand what you're talking about? Yeah. So that's why I've seen many of my daughters, my God, start running hard for God. And then when the enemy brings someone to say, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian, or I read my Bible, or, me and God got my own thing on, but they spend more time harmony and fellowship with that person. It's just a matter of time. His voice or her voice is going to pull you away. And we have seen it many, many times inside of this church. Many men and women was running hard for God, but then that pipe down bit them and they started listening. They was running hard. They had a strong, firm, firm foundation, at least I thought. But then they joined wit. I'm still with the sermon. They yoked wit, joined wit. They came together with. They had fellowship with. My God, people, men, our women. I ain't talking about the women. Men, our women. And my God, they was running a good race, Paul said, Galatians. And now they didn't tapped out. Yeah. Yeah. Because, see, the flesh. Some people, my God, they will, they will compromise who they are and lower their standards because they need, if somebody shows some interest in them, they bite. And so they're willing to dump down who they are and they know what God told them, oh my God, to have a warm body beside them. Because they need to be yoked together, they don't care what it is. Notice I said, they don't care what it is. Because it's a human, it can still be what it is. And when you yoke, my God, whatever, thank you, Holy Ghost, God just gave this to me. Whatever you yoke to, you become like that what you yoke to. You can't be yoked to something and don't become like it. You're going to take on some mannerism. You're going to start talking like it. You're going to start acting like it. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There, there, there's a certain culture that going off for Christ have, my God. And so, therefore, you kind of act like what's over here. But you go somewhere else to another church, they have a culture, and you act like them, my God. And so, if you, my God, yoke to an unbeliever, you yoke to somebody that's demonic and oppressive, Oh, don't you know they can be dressed up in polo and Tim's and come on, Barry, and all that stuff we were? My God, don't you know they could be demonic? Be careful what you yoke to. Yeah. Be careful. Be careful. Oh, my God, this is apostolic teaching and father and all in one. Be careful what you are yoked to. Be careful what you are yoked to. Are you listening to me, kids? Be careful. 
on Instagram. When different young boys is trying to friend you and all that stuff. However, I ain't never been on Instagram, but how all that stuff go. Be careful what you yoke to. You know what I'm trying to say? Be a light. Are you listening to me, Isaac? Be careful what you're yoked to. This cause everybody else is doing it in the school don't mean you're supposed to do it. Are you listening to me, Kamari? Are you listening to me? That don't mean nothing. But it's okay to be different. It's okay to be different because your past is different. I don't fit in with a lot of these pastors. I'm too, I'm too, I'm too, whatever. They, nah, I, I'm not that. This is not that. This is not that, baby. I promise you, this is not that. You know what I'm trying to say? I'm, I'm cool with being different. I promise you, I'm cool with being different. I'm different but saved and delivered and set free. So think about these words. Lifestyle means fellowship. Our lifestyles mean fellowship are different. Our thought life is different. That means harmony. And we act differently. Don't you know, my God, who, my God, uh, 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 differently also put right down the word agreement. What are you coming into agreement with? The Bible says with two or three touch and agree. Yeah. What are you coming into agreement with? How can an unbeliever and a believer be in agreement? I'm going to clean this up and make you understand what I mean. Because Paul would condemn unbelievers. But I'm trying to lay this down for the church. How can, my God, righteousness and unrighteousness be in agreement? How can I have more fun with an unbeliever than I do with a believer? Yeah. You know what we tell ourselves? Let me give you a world's statement. Church people too messy. Yeah. Oh, y'all didn't say it. And so, therefore, you're more comfortable hanging around unbelievers because you know why? Unbelievers don't hold you accountable. Yeah. Girl, it's okay. God going to forgive you. It's okay. My, just one time. Come on, let's... Don't you know, God gave me a, ooh, I was in prayer. Intercessory prayer, that's why it's good to come to prayer. God gave me a revelation, showed me a, re a vision. Plain as day, because I pray right over there. That's my spot. God meet me there every, every, at 530, every Wednesday. He meet me at a lot of places. But God showed me about clubs. People run to a club, Tanya, and when it's popping, Pastor Ron, they run to it, but soon as they get tired of it, they go to another club. Yeah. And then when they get tired of that club, they go to another club. And when they get tired of that club, they go to another club. That's how they do church. There's no, there's no loyalty in the body of Christ. That's why when they come, preach to them. And when they leave, God bless you and keep pushing. That is your pastor's heart, son. Preach to them when they hear when they leave, God bless you. I ain't got no odd against nobody that's came and left this church. Period. Because I know it. they change churches like they change clubs. He just gave it to me right there. That's a post right there, Mahogany. Yeah. People change churches very like they change clubs. You'd have been all around the country in all type of clubs, baby. So get that image, son. People change churches like they change clubs because nobody's yoked to the God of the church. When you yoke to God of the church, you don't change churches like that. You don't, my God, you don't leave unless God uproots you and allow you to leave. When you rooted and connected to the God of that church, my God, you just don't leave where and go where it's convenient that we can hide. See, it's uncomfortable over here. That's why I tell you, if you ain't growing in the dark, baby, you ain't going to like it over here. It's just a matter of time. That's why I keep those close to me I can, and I carry my, I rub my, I rub my cloth very loose. I'm loyal to those who are loyal to the God that I serve. Amen. Notice I said the God that I serve. Yeah. Wear your cloth loose. Mm -hmm. Wear your garments loose. Yeah. Wear your garments loose. Even in your 12, wear it loose. Wear it loose. What that does, Bishop taught me to guard your heart. Get your heart away one piece at a time, Tina. One piece at a time. Guard your heart. Ooh, my God. Wear this world loosely, Paul says. Mm. Let's look at this. Also, Paul warns us that joining ourselves together in any, in any of these areas may result. In what areas I told you? Lifestyle, our thought life, and so forth. They may result into grief, hardship, sorrow, and pain. Write, me, write those down. Grief, hardship, sorrow, and pain. When you join yourself, my God, together with fellowshipping and, and harmony and agreement it's with unbelievers, that which is contaminated, you're going to be dealing with hardship, grief, sorrow, and pain. Think about the things, my God, that has happened because we got hooked up in the wrong relationships. Even in the church. That's why, let me take it to a higher level. That's why the Bible says be led by his spirit. Because you got to understand, even though a person is in church and they're trying to work out their soul salvation, some people ain't ready to handle you. 
That's why you got to know when it's time to go to people. You got to know when it's time to bring people into your life. Even though they're your brothers and sisters, love them, but there's a time and a place for everything, a book of Ecclesiastic. Everybody's not ready to be in that inner circle, baby. Everybody's not ready to come close. That's why you got to be led. You got to say, God, my God, divinely, 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 divinely hook me up with the people I'm supposed to be hooked up. And everybody I'm not supposed to be hooked to, keep me away from them. Yeah, yeah. That ain't pride. My God, that's protecting your life. Because you want, because when it's a when it's a God connection, it feels good. Yeah. When it's God connection, it's an agreement. When it's a God connection, it's harmony. It don't mean you're not gonna have a little conflict and all yeah. little turbulence. But for the most part, my God, when God put it together, let no man separate right. God yeah, and yeah, join yeah, yeah. together. Yeah. Ooh, my God, this is heavy. I hope y'all recording this, media. I ain't, I said media. Pain, pain. Let's look at this pain, hardship. Think about some of the pain you sit with right now because you join yourself for somebody. It could be a Christian or a non-Christian, and she hurt you. He left you. He abused you. He lied to you. You thought he was something else, but he really wasn't. He mishandled your emotion. My wife used to always tell me what she didn't told me since we've been past. She said, I'm a delicate flower, baby. You got to handle me right. You talking about 30 years with mine, but she still said, oh, you got to <laughs> come on, Sharon. You need to start covering your pastor sometime. <laughs> And you too, daughter. Already. <laughs> Kenny, are you listening to me? We got pain. We got sorrow. We got grief. That God never meant for us to go through, Minister Joyce. But we joined ourselves at the wrong time with people that we never should have been joined with. We got involved in stuff and things that we never should have been involved in. And so, therefore, we bitter. We got walls up to keep the enemy out and to keep people out. But we have become imprisoned by the same walls that we have built. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm trying to say, so you're doing yourself more harm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should protect yourself. I see my babies over here. They listening. You should protect yourself. Elbow, Kamari. Kamari, wake up. Wake up. You should. You should be. You should be careful. I want y'all to be careful. Are you listening to me? That's why we as parents, thank you. I just looked at these babies over here. Thank you, my God. That's why we got to be careful what we allow and who we allow around our children. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Don't just bring any man to put them over your children. Because guess what? When you bring somebody, when somebody cross your threshing floor or your door, you just invited something in. Many of us are inviting curses yeah. and demonic activity. Yeah. My God, some men, my God, are getting good with you, my God, but they target is them. Yeah. That's how the enemy is. Yeah, he going to do everything. He'll go hard for five, six years until he get in a look for an opportunity to touch her or touch him. Because you didn't join yourself where they came in agreement with something that's demonic. Yeah. Be careful what you yoke to. Be careful what you yoke to. Yeah. Be careful what y'all yoke to, Faith. Be careful, young men, these girls. Yeah. These girls, they, they just as ruthless. My, I remember mean, when I came home from prison, my God, in 1998, mama said, you don't have to worry about no woman trying. Uh, you don't have to try to talk to no woman. No woman. They'll come talk to you. Yeah. It was a time when women didn't approach men. Women just go whore after men now. <laughs> and they don't care if you married either. Yeah. Be careful what you yoke to. Think about the sermon. I'm taking my time for a reason because this ain't no hopping and hooping. And, no, my God, be careful what you yoke to. Be careful what you yoke to. Be careful what you yoke to. What has called you grief? What sorrow and hardship and pain do you have because you were yoked to the wrong thing? You got joined to it. And now it's God's fault or his fault or her fault or somebody else's fault or whatever. Did God tell you to go to that church? Now you bitter. You went over there and got hurt, but did God tell you to go to that church? How did you go because everybody else was going? Who dropped you? Who was carrying you in the spirit but dropped you? Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you are a member of going over Christ Church and you're not properly connected, my God, you can't be dropped at this church. You will be dropped. Now, I'm not going to say can. You will. Be dropped. If you're not connected to a 12 and 12 leaders, there are members that join this church Sunday. You need to be getting with Kim and finding out who they are and remember what they and get to them and find out what they need to do because we don't want nobody dropped in this ministry. It's hard. My God, you cannot effectively pastor a church over 50 people. So if you don't want to be dropped and you're tired of being left out in ministry and you're tired of being dropped in church, get connected. Get connected. Get connected. I guarantee you, if you're sitting in a 12 group, it's going to be hard for you to get dropped. 
Because sooner or later, my God, because every, uh, every other month, or every month, my God, I'm asking my 12 about where this person at. How's she doing? How he doing? Where is he at? I'm asking questions because that's how I pass in my church through the 144. Everybody that's in the 12. And so you need to be praying about getting in the 12. And so therefore, if you can't get to me, I'm sorry because I do not answer my phone like I used to. Many of you used to have free access to me. No more. Amen. And it's been like that. I'm not God, but I'm telling you, I got to alleviate some stress. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel real good because I am not stressed. As checks and balance, and I got my advisory boy sitting right back there listening to me. It's got to be like that. Got to raise up people. Got to raise them up, Pastor Ron, Pastor D. You got to raise them up. And then you got to be confident enough, my God, to release them to operate in function and purpose. Are y'all with me so far? So I want you to think about as I move quickly, my God, I want you to think about the grief, hardship, and sorrow that you're sitting with right now. That God never, I'm going to say God never, Really want it to happen. As I told you, there's really no accidents and coincidence in God, but there are certain things we're dealing with, my God, that God didn't want us to go through, but God will turn it around and use it. So be careful. This type of sermon so far, what I've said, is going to require you to make some decisions. There are certain people, woman of God, you got to clip. You got to do John 15, 1 through 5. You got to prune. You got to cut, baby. You got to cut some people off, and you got to be cool with them, talking about you, lying on you, hating on you, and jealous of you. You got to be cool with that. Many of you won't cut them off because you're worried about what they're going to say. But you got to cut them off. And you got to move on with your life because you can't go no farther because they won't let you. Now, let me bring some clarity to what I'm talking about. This does not mean we disassociate. April, put this on Facebook. This does not mean, because they caught the first half, and I want to make sure I balance this. They, this does not mean that we disassociate ourselves with unbelievers. That's not what Paul was talking about. This is why I laid this like this, because many people take the scripture out of context. But the Bible says I ain't supposed to be around unbelievers. The Bible tells me to stay away. And I see you taking the scripture completely out of context. He was talking about don't join with. You and I, the Bible says you would have to leave the world in order to get away from unbelievers. Because guess what? We all were unbelievers. And some of us in the church still unbelievers. <laughs> so I'm not going to stop associating with you. I'm going to try to get you to become a believer. Watch this right here. 1 Corinthians 9. Write this down. Write this down. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 23. Let's bring some context, Pastor Ron, to this right here. This is what it says. I ain't telling you to leave your husband and ain't saved. I ain't telling you to quit messing with your daughter and son because they not saved. That's not what Paul is talking about. Are y'all with me so far? Yeah. Somebody give God a hand first. Okay. 1 Corinthians 9, 19 to 20 says, even though I am free. Paul talking. Even though I am free. Tanya. Free. I am a free man with no master. I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. Verse 20 says, when I was a Jew, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. When I was with those who followed the Jewish law, I too lived under the, that law. Even though I am not subject to the law. I did this, watch this, y'all. I did this, Paul saying, so that I could bring to Christ those who are under the law. So he had to have some, common, some, some commonality. He had to have some fellowship with different people that was not Christians for the sole purpose of to bring them over, to cross them over, to bring them to Christ. But many of us is dealing with unbelievers. Instead of them, instead of us influencing them, they influencing yeah. us. Yeah. Paul said, my God, now, I'm not going to compromise the standards, but I'm going to go associate with a Jew. I'm going to associate with a Gentile because a Jew and a Gentile did not associate in the Bible. So Paul said, you know what? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm free. I'm, 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 not a, I'm not a slave to nothing, but I'm going to be a slave to trying to win these people to Christ. So I became like a Jew. I became like a, G a Gentile. But he says my verb is without compromising the gospel. You can become like something without compromising the gospel because you are, you got to, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You got to, you are like this, Janice. You and I, don't you know, you and I got to be secret agents? Secret agents. Oh, my God, God will strategically move you, my God, and position you and put you in places, my God, oh, my God, so that you can mm, spy out the land and then lead somebody to Christ. God will plan you. be like, how in the world did I end up in this job? Why am I here? Why am I over here? Why did that person come? Why, how in the world did I do that? Because you are an agent. And you are there on assignment. And when your assignment is up, it's time to shift. Some of us don't know God's voice, so when our assignment is up, we stay too long. God's grace has already moved on. 
when God's grace is lifted, it's time to break camp in advance, baby. But you got to understand you are secret agents. You got to understand a tiny and all y'all. My God, it's a school of the star and faith. My God, y'all need to tell yourself every morning I'm a secret agent. My God, you got to be looking for somebody to lead to Christ. My God, that person, that's, that young girl that's sitting over there nobody want to talk to all the time. My God, everybody laughs at her, thinks she's weird and stuff. That's your assignment right there. My God, you go love on her and say, are you listening to me, Tony, y'all? You go love on the baby and say, can I pray with you? I'll be your friend. You want to eat with me? I, you can sit down and eat with me, my God, because you got you praying. Yeah. That's it. But get there when you're strong enough because yeah. you don't want her to affect you. Yeah. You are to affect her. So you got to teach the kids, Pastor Dean, to be secret agents. So that means they got to be doing like they did this past Sunday. Oh, my God, when the Tony them came, Destiny them came out and said they had a move of God. People was laid out on the floor. The kids was up there uh, laid out in the presence of the Lord, praying and crying out to the Lord. My God, that's what we want. I'm sorry we ain't lit every Wednesday. Our children, but they getting foundational stuff put down in their spirit. My God, you can be lit all you want, my God. But if you ain't got nothing in them kids, them kids, soon they get of age, they gone. I don't want no lit ministry. I want foundational children. And they'll be lit once they become foundational. Yeah. Oh, y'all don't like it, my God. Put something in them, my God, that's going to keep them when temptation comes. When they, my God, hey, when they get influenced and want to do something, they'll say, nope, I'm committed to Christ, my God. I ain't no shadow of turning, my God. It's okay for me to be different. Many of these kids jumping and shouting, howling, and all that stuff, they can't take nothing for the God. For God. But everything is lit. Everything is lit. Everything is crop fleet, whatever y'all be saying. What you got on the inside of you? Oh, my God. Let's go a little deeper. Look at verse 22. It says, when I am with those who are weak, Paul says, I share their weakness. For I want to bring everyone. I want to bring. I want to bring the weak to Christ. He says, yes, I try to find common ground. Paul says, watch this, y'all. Paul says, I tried to find common ground with everyone doing everything I can to save some. He ain't trying to find common ground, y'all, to fit in. He ain't trying to find common ground. Who y'all listen to me, church. My God, to be light. This ain't, this is not that. Paul said, I'm trying to find common ground because I'm a secret agent and I'm trying to win your soul. I'm trying to help you cross over from darkness to light. I'm trying to make you understand who you are. Oh my God, I got a strategic strategy, my God. Oh my God, my God, my God. Somebody give God a hand. Mm. Oh, I get fired up when I read the word. The word of God just does something to me. He says, I've tried to find common ground with everyone doing everything I can to say. I do everything to spread the gospel and share its blessings. Oh, my God. You're selling cars, Brian. I'm sorry. You're on the front row. You're selling cars. You're doing a good job. Keep making that money. I give God the glory. My God. Oh, my God. But you got to find common ground. That's why you got to be prayed up. Not saying you're not, son. Prayed up, my God. Every morning you wake up, okay, God. Okay, somebody going to buy a car. We know that. We need to cheat, my God. But somebody's soul is at stake, too, though. Yeah. And so, Lord, give me common ground. After they sell this car, now I tell them, now, if you get that money, huh? now I say, can I talk to you about somebody that's able to change the situation? I'm just saying, man of God, because it's always, I, I, your job is a ministry. Yeah. Everything you do, son, is a ministry. When you cutting hair, it's a ministry. When I tell school, it's a ministry. When you weld in, my God, it's a ministry. Dion, you got people that's coming to the church because it's ministry. Everything you do is a ministry. Your work is a ministry. Come on. When you go get your heart done, it's a ministry. When I go get my nails done, it's a ministry. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Everything is a ministry. Oh, y'all don't like it, but it's Bible. Oh, my God. Brother Boyd, all that you got, that's ministry back there, man of God. Yes, sir, that's ministry. His assignment is to help you. Are you listening to me? Oh, my God. Paul said, I find common ground. Y'all start praying for some of them friends at school that y'all know they're struggling. Are you listening to me, little Logans? Oh, my God. Y'all got so much God in y'all, woman of God. Y'all start praying and say, God, make me a secret agent. Show me somebody that need prayer and then put them to the side. Who my God, Tiffany going to stand with you, show it off. They say something to you, you can't be praying for them. Say, is it right to obey you or is it right to obey God, baby? I'm going to obey God. I can't get nobody to say Hey, I'm an agent. Do I got any secret agents in the church tonight? Woo, Jesus. It's okay, Tiff. They are secret agents. Y'all better stand with y'all kids, my God. 
If they're trying to win somebody to Christ, stand with them. Okay, my God, let me go. Let me move forward right quick. Whenever we are compelled to follow a specific sin, whenever we are compelled to follow a specific sin or sinful lifestyle, we are yoked or robbed or robbed of our freedom that God desires for us to walk in. Let me say that again. Whenever we are compelled to follow a specific sin or a sinful lifestyle, we are yoked or robbed of our freedom that God desires for us to walk in. The Spirit of God will drive the devil right up at the church. I just seen it tonight. The devil would drive, I mean, God would drive the devil right up at the church. When it's power and his presence, it can't sit. Flesh can't come in agreement with spirit. Play in church to clear your mind, you won't be comfortable in this church. Coming to be an expect, a spectator, but don't got a yes, it's going to be real uncomfortable in this church. I know it is. Number two, let me move. We got a few more minutes. From when you are yoked, you lead to this right here. Point number two, bondage. Bondage. This is a cold spirit right here. Don't you know it first starts out, as I close this series, it starts out as a stronghold mindset. And then your stronghold leads to yoke. The yoke leads to bondage. Please write that down. It starts out as a stronghold. Then it moves to being yoked, joined with. And then it moves to being in bondage. Stronghold, yoke, and my last one is bondage. John 8, 33 says, but we are descendants of Abraham, they said. My God, we have never been slaves to anyone. They didn't understand what God was talking about. What do you mean you will be set free? The Israelite nation, let me move, the Israelite nation was well acquainted with the word bondage. Just like the church is. The church is well acquainted. We hear the word bondage, we think about all kind of stuff. The Israelite nation was well acquainted with the word bondage. It means to be a slave. Write that down. Oh my God, we all was once a slave to something. And some of us still are in certain areas. And that's okay as long as you are working this thing out. It means to be a slave to or to serve. Whatever you in bondage to, you serve. Oh my God, are y'all with me, church? Whatever you in bondage to, you serve. Some of us, the first thing we do in the morning is jump on social media. We don't, we, we don't even, some of us be on social media, we can't even brush our teeth before we go to work. Slave, 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 slave. Social media is keeping you from this. The very thing that give you life. Social media. Yes, social media. We are slaves to social media. We think about social media and what's going on in the flesh. Flesh meaning the world more than we think about what God is saying in the kingdom. You better become a slave to this. That's the only way I've been able to make it. Because of this why I'm a slave, a doulos to the word of God. It's not an option. Every single day, period. I was on the phone talking to my wife, my God, while she was at work, she came from a doctor, and I said, okay, baby. She said, okay, what you doing? I said, I'm in the Word. She said, okay, got to get it. Got to get it. Do loss. I mean, slave to this right here. I showed them I ain't got no problem with it either. I love the Word of God. And if you're going, you need to fall in love with the Word of God. Let me say that. You need to fall in love with the word of God. Bondage, bondage, slave to and he serve. And you will be subject to someone or something. It's okay to be subject to Christ, a slave to Christ. Paul said, I'm a slave unto God. I'm a slave. We all need to become slaves to Christ. Take that white and black stuff off of that. That's not what Paul is talking about. Paul said, I have my allegiance and my lordship is to Christ, period. And that's what we all need. I promise you, when you make him Lord, capital L-O-R-D, you'll become a doulos. You'll become a slave to Christ. And that's a good slave, and that's a good master to be upon. I don't mind being a, him being my master. Amen. I don't mind Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, my God being my master. I am a slave to Jesus Christ. I know in whom I believe. I am fully persuaded. You can't come talk to me about no other religion, no other nothing, because I'm not trying to hear it. If that works for you, fine. If that works for you, fine. I don't entertain nothing, and that's why I'm secure in who I am in God. 
Many of you ain't 100% sure about this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Many of you ain't 100% sure about this. That's why you will entertain anything. You're double-minded. You're lending your ear to all type of different false religions and, and false prophecies, and you listen to all this stuff, and it's just terrible. This is never outdated, Henry. Stay with this. You'll be okay. Let me hear them bring you on in. Thank you, Lord. What are you, what are you in bondage to? Bondage means subject to something or someone. If another human being got you in bondage, you better get out some kind of way. Let me give you some Bible. Genesis 1, 26 said, God gave you dominion over everything but humans. You and I are supposed to rule. Anytime you are in bondage to another man or another woman, you, that, that's, that's not healthy. Just let me say it like that. That's right. It's not healthy. Anytime you are dominated and controlled by another human being, male or female, that is unhealthy. Anytime you can't move unless she give you permission, anytime yeah, you can't yeah, do nothing unless she yeah, give you permission, yeah. you are in bondage. If your whole identity is wrapped up in him or her, you are in bondage. Come on down. Yeah. If you think about him or her before you think about what God feel about you, you're in bondage. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us can be even in bondage in our own marriages. you more worried about your significant other than you are God. The devil is a lie. Yes, he is. I said the devil is a lie. Yeah. That's bondage. Will you move when she move and you move when he move? You care about more than with some human being, whoever, wife, kids, mama, it don't matter. Some of you in bondage to your own mama. You know why? Because you need her little finance to help you do what you do or keep your kids. So therefore, whatever she tell you to do or don't do, you do. That's bondage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a cold-blooded word. Bondage and bound. It's, it's the same thing. Let's move a little deeper. Let me get you out of here. This is good, my God. For instance, the Israelites were in bondage to the nation of Egypt, serving as their slaves and performing the most many old tasks. Whatever you are bound to, whatever you're in bondage to, you perform for it. So guess what? So when you go to the strip clubs, you make it rain. You make it rain for them girls, they in bondage. And they sell their body and what stuff for this right here. This is a lot of people's God in the church. They love this. And so, therefore, the women that's dancing on the pole, instead of them getting a job, they're willing, because they can make two or $3,000 in one night. I understand. See what I'm trying to say? But they're in bondage to this. And there's men that go watch them and pay for that because they're in bondage to the flesh. Lust. Because they're unhappy at home, so they go lust off of some other woman they can't sleep with. They fantasize. That's why you got to be careful about all of those sexual sin and pornography and all of those stuff. Because you're in bondage to it. You're in bondage to it. You're in bondage to it. Are oh, you listening to me? You're in bondage to it. Money. Money always tell off. Money will always t test your loyalty. That's why God, when I birthed the church, thank you, Holy Ghost, God told me not to take a salary, and I still don't take a salary. You didn't know that, did you? Still, to this day, don't draw a salary from the church. Some people say, Pastor, you're hitting my blessings. Well, when God tell me to draw a full salary, I will. But in the meantime, I ain't, it's not important. Because God has blessed me in the natural. I don't have to draw a salary. I don't pastor for money. I pastor for your soul, baby. Ask some of these pastors to give back their salary and see if they still pastor. That's real talk. Young pastor. Yeah. Young pastor. Tell them, tell them don't pastor for a whole year. I've been pastor going on six years and ain't never drawn a salary. That's why you can't pimp me. You can't buy me. I'm going to preach what the Bible say. Let me get on out of it. Let me get on out. Let me get on out. So you perform. You perform for that which have you in bondage. See, some of y'all need to understand the heart of this pastor standing up here keeping on a dollar. It ain't, I don't pastor for money. I pastor because I care about your life. That's why I'm very untraditional. That's why I preach real. Because it takes a real gospel to, say, to help a real people that's trying to come out of real bondage. Yeah. Let me get you on through six. Come, somebody give God a hand because y'all get lost already. Y'all lost. Are you performing? Are you performing? Let me finish. Are you performing for that which has you bound? Did it make you dance? I can make you dance. Yes, I can. Oh, y'all know I'm about that Zap and Roger. I can't get nobody to say nothing like right that. It's a dangerous thing, Christians, when you dance for the flesh more than you dance for God. When it will make you dance, that is a dangerous thing. Well, if it will make you dance, that is a dangerous thing. What are you dancing to? What are you dancing to? 
What are you dancing to? Are you dancing to the rhythm of the kingdom? Or are you dancing to the rhythm of the flesh? It's either one or the other. Let me get on. My God, bondage can also mean the state of being under control. Under control. It can mean the state of being under control of the force, of a force, of a force or influence. Oh, my God, influence. When you're in bondage, when you are yoked to something, it begins to influence you. Man, this is deep. Thank you, Holy Ghost. For example, you can be in bondage to fur. Write that down. My God, all your life could be bound up in sexual sins. Bondage is the result of negative strongholds in our mind. Remember, it starts out as a stronghold, y'all. And then once it becomes a stronghold, stronghold, and stronghold become a part of your belief system, your mind. And then once your mind get wrapped around it, once your mind and your thoughts become in harmony, in agreement, come on, and find common ground with that thing called fear, then you yoke to it. Now when the fear say, you can't do this, you can't open up in prayer, don't try to apply for that job. You know what I'm saying? Fear robs you. When you try to move forward, fear yanks you back down because yeah. you're yoked to it. Yeah. And then when you're yoked to something, you come bound to it. Yeah. It controls you. Yeah. Many of you are called to do great things, but fear. If you break the spirit of fear, hando boshike da bashanda, I promise you, you'll see your life soar. Yeah. Yeah. I had to get past fear yeah. early on. Don't seem like it, but I have. My God, I'll be patient and walking. That's why y'all be sitting there. I, I deal with this. Man, man, let me, let me get on. I get, ooh, my God, y'all don't understand the call. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We are enslaved to certain lifestyles. Write that word down. I'm moving quickly through our addictions. Addiction is not drug and alcohol. And our cravings. Don't you know your cravings lead you to be bound? Some of us crave the thing. That's why I be praying every single day. I mention it almost every single day. I always pray, Lord, change my appetites. Yeah. Are you listening to me, cousin? Change my appetites. Give me an appetite for the things of God. I pray that prayer. For all those that are struggling with different type of addictions, say, God, change my appetite. Yeah. God had to shift my appetite from that what I used to love to do. Yeah. Some of you need to say, God, crucify my appetite. Kill my appetite for this sexual sin. Kill my life. appetite for this porn and all this old dog. Kill it. Shift your appetite, your cravings, your cravings, and you yoke together with your cravings. I'm trying to release you, but you yoke together to your cravings, your desires. That's why Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. You got to crucify yourself. Oh, my God, many people are being picked off, my God, and, and, and uprooted from the things of God because their cravings and their appetites, my God, is out of control. Whatever you feed lives, whatever you don't feed dies. Oh, my God, I'm trying to help the body of Christ. Mm. We would never escape certain bondage. Ooh, this is going to be good. We would never escape certain bondage if we believe the mindset we establish is true. We would never escape certain bondage if we believe the mindset we establish is true. Notice I said, what, look what I put, Pastor D, if we believe and that what we establish. He didn't say God. Yeah. If we don't believe that it's wrong, we're going to keep doing it. My God, that's why an addict can continue to harm himself until they believe that it's hurting themselves. For many years, I knew, watch this, that I was hurting myself. Not only that, hurting myself, killing myself, Marquita, but I couldn't stop because my appetite was too strong. It was started off as a snake in Genesis and became a, a, a dragon in Revelation. My addiction became a dragon. And so it moved. When it moved, I moved. What's your addiction tonight? What's your dragon? What's your dragon that you ain't willing to tell nobody? What desires have you got that you know there's a dragon? What keeps bringing you to the altar? What keeps telling you that you, that you can't do it when God said you can do it? What is, what, what, what is disqualifying you that you are allowing in your mind that disqualifies you? Some of us have lost our love. Our love has been shattered. We can't really love because we, ain't, we, we never really experienced love. So you need God to do something with your love life. Some of us think we don't deserve to be loved. Let me tell my babies right now, every last one of y'all look at me deserves to be loved. Amen. Amen. He liked the little man said, Amen. <laughs> he, yeah, you deserve to be loved, don't you? So he said, I deserve to be loved. That's right. Yeah. Every one of you, my God, deserve to be loved. And I challenge you parents to tell your children you love them often. I tell mine all the time now because I missed out on all that over there. Let me get you out of here. Let me get you out. So therefore, if you believe that something you are doing is okay, you ain't going to never stop doing it. 
For instance, sex, if you believe this, sex leads to happiness, you ain't going to stop having sex. Even though you know the Bible tells you to live with another man or woman, it's out of order. But it says, I ain't going to stop doing it. They, but don't, don't be worried about it. They, they probably know more than what you know. That's why I wanted them in here. I know when God said keep them in there, I told school to go keep them in there. But if you see sex as hap- uh, as, oh my God, sex leads to happiness, you ain't going to stop doing it. Because you, you equate happiness to sexual activity. Think about what I just said. Think about what the Spirit of God is saying. Let me do it one more time. My God, if you believe the mindset that you establish is true, you ain't going to stop doing it, man. If you think that she if she was sent to you by God, but dang, for so many, but she's hurt. You just says convince yourself that this is God, Come on now. and everything about it is causing grief, sorrow, and pain. But you won't let it go because you have established an institution in your mind that this God is. Boy, that hit me in my spirit. So you will let some woman or some man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Break it, God. Break it, God. Break it, God. Break it, God. Mm. Let me finish. Break it, God. Here's another thing. Shopping equals to fulfillment. Shopping equals to fulfillment. If you see shopping as bringing you fulfillment, you're not going to stop shopping. But you're broke, busted, and disgusted because everything is external. You want to look so good, but you you ain't got. You walk into your crib and you got you, your your wardrobe is real tight, but your crib is real raggedy. <laughs> Let's move a little deeper. I'm just trying to help mine. I'm gonna get you out here. Watch this. You won't change this if adultery makes you feel good. I know several women, my God, that. Married, that adultery, stepping out, conniving, and jiving makes them feel good. Many of them used to go here, but the Spirit of God drove it out. Now, I wish they would have stayed because they could have got free. Some people shipwreck and, and tap out just when they finna get free. See what I'm trying to say? But if you think adultery makes you feel good or make you happy or brings you fulfillment, you're in bondage. You're yoked to a spirit that's demonic. Okay, strongholds, yokes, and bondage. I'm about done. Strong, thank you for your time. Strongholds, yokes, and bondage form a vicious cycle. Vicious cycle. Eventually, we are bound so tightly that it's almost impossible to break free from their hold. Oh, my God, that 13 years of addiction like to kill me, boy. Woo, Dion, that was a cold-blooded 13 years. It's something, April, I never want to experience again in my life. To be that bound and controlled where, 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 where my wife's voice didn't even matter. Yeah. Well, one time I was getting ready to leave and I caught a cab and my wife was standing outside the cab in her gown. Talking about Jew, don't leave. Don't go. And I'm looking at my wife mm-hmm. out the window. She's like, baby, please, I just came home. And I wasn't even home a day. Been gone for two weeks. She's like, baby, don't go. Don't go, Jew, don't go. And I'm looking at my wife. But I was bound. Yeah. Whatever has you bound leads you. Yeah, yeah. Whatever has you in bondage controls you. Mm-hmm. My wife is looking through the cab talking about you, don't go. Baby, stay home, please. Mm-hmm. My wife's voice didn't matter because gangs and streets and drugs matter. Mm-hmm. Told the cab while my wife was standing, standing right there and drive off. Mm-hmm. And y'all wonder why this pastor is so real and so hard yeah, about yeah. God. Yeah. You don't know my story. You hear yeah. bits and pieces of it. I lived it. Mm-hmm. My wife is looking at me and I said, drive off. Left my wife standing right there because I had to go get it because yeah. my desires and craving were stronger mm-hmm. for that than it is for my own family. Yeah. And you wonder why I go hard like I go hard. Y'all better ask somebody. Yeah. Oh, my God, y'all better ask somebody. Mm. So I take that same mindset as I get ready to close. I'm looking at your guys, uh, brother uh, board. I take this same mindset that I had so determined to please that flesh and get high. I'm like that with God now. I'm determined to please God. I'm determined to read my Bible. I'm determined to live right. I'm determined to pray. See, the same mindset, God didn't take my past. He just redirected it. He just shifted my appetite. That's what it's going to take if you're going to survive and make it out of an addiction, baby. 
And it's the same thing for those that struggle with different addictions. If you got to have that much tenacity and that much determination, my God, to shift. God ain't going to take your passion. He's going to redirect it. Go on for God like you go on for your flesh and watch what God will do in your life. Get serious about God like you're serious about that sex and that mess and watch what God do in your life. Let me get you out of here. I'm done. Thank you for allowing me this time. Let's give you some signs and I'm done. Write these signs down. Some of y'all needed that. Yours might not be alcohol. Yours might not be joy. But whatever it is, it's something. Thank you, Sister John. It's something. We are constantly, there's the signs to look for. This is how you know when you're yoked to something. We are constantly critical of everyone and everything. Constantly critical of everyone and everything. Number two, I'm moving quickly. We, are, we minimize or negate true positive things said about us. We don't want to accept the truth. God says you are fearfully one he made because you're in bondage to his voice or her voice. You tell yourself I'm not. Your, his voice or her voice means more than what God's words say about you. God said you can do it, but because your mama told you you couldn't do it, now you believe her more than you believe God. The Bible says whose report are you going to believe, man's report or God's report? You have to do like I did. This young pastor chose to believe God's report. In spite of my failures and fighting the person I used to be 20 plus years ago, I chose my quitting to believe who God said I was. God said I'm free, and I've been free 20 plus years. See what I'm trying to say? Whose report are you going to believe? Yes. When are you going to quit being in bondage and yoked to, my God, people's beliefs and opinions about you? Amen. Amen. Oh, my God, that's why I got so much freedom, because I've been delivered. Some of y'all yeah. think it's pride, but I've been delivered from the opinions of people, baby. Your now. opinion Come and perception now. don't control me at all. Yeah. None. Yeah. None. Yeah. Your opinion, your perception has no yeah. impact on me. Quit negating yes, the positive things that people are saying about you. Yes, what did the Bible say about you? Yes. Let your belief become this belief, and yes. you'll promise you it. And the devil ain't got a hell to put you in. Bye when bye. you take on the mind of Christ, you'll look at him like, man, you got to be crazy. I'm, I'm, you better ask him. All that stuff that you should do don't work no more. Yeah. Everything you used to say to me don't have no bearing on me. Yeah. You think I can't make it, but I can yeah. make it. Yeah. You yeah. said I, yeah. I, yeah. I may be stacked a little, I may be a little thicker, but I'm still a dying piece. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Ooh, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. See what I'm trying to say? And so, 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 so you got to take on the mind of Christ. Oh, my God. It's, all, it's okay. Some of the most beautiful women in the world is little. Come on. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yeah, when you confident you'll carry that weight real proper. Better ask somebody. And to some of y'all little young cute people, my God, keep on living. You're going to go out this way, I promise you. You ain't going to always be cute and petite. You can just keep. I can't do nobody say no, can yeah. Let me get on out here, okay? And so what am I trying to say? Believe God's report about you. Believe God's report about you. Give yourself a hand. Come on, give yourself a hand. Come on, come on. Watch this, my God. Here's another time sign that we are yoked and in bondage. We had our bad habits. When we, this is a sign we had our bad habits. I know we just clapped, and it's okay because we are free. We are free, but we had our bad habits. We had our bad habits. I'm redundant, but we had our bad habits. Let me give you number four. Certain thoughts fill us with shame, guilt, and condemnation. If you're in bondage, I taught y'all that this past Sunday, I believe, I summoned for last about being in shame. The devil is a lie. Mm -mm. Yes, we have made mistakes, all of them, including one standing up here. I just shared a lot of them with you. But I ain't in bondage to it. Period. Because it used to be. Like I tell you, don't want nobody to bring up your past, don't live your past. A lot of our shame is keep it stay in our present because we keep letting we keep living our past, so they keep that. I said our shame is in our present because we keep living our past. See what I'm trying to say? So that person keep bringing up that shame from your past. Because you keep putting your past and living your past. When you have removed yourself from your past, you, can't, you ain't going to have no And when you know God is forgiven. See, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, a person that struggles with shame and guilt, they haven't received God's true forgiveness. And a person that won't forgive, they haven't really accepted God's forgiveness for them. And a person that's always sticky and offended, they haven't fully received God's forgiveness. 
If it's always somebody else's fault and critical of everything and ain't nothing right and, and they don't do this right and, and the game time ain't this and they don't start this time and they don't do that. See, that's critical. That's yeah. you're in bondage. Yeah. You can't never find nothing good about nobody, even the church you go to, even the people that surround you. You even criticize your own family. You're critical of your own family and loved ones. We're going to deal with vows and curses and stuff next week if the Lord delay is coming. I had to repent, said God, because we didn't, a lot of us, they cursed a lot of our generation. We didn't curse them over there. We didn't curse ourselves. People have cursed us. Let me give it to you. So certain thoughts fill us with shame and guilt and condemnation. Quick, condemn yourself. Therefore, there is now no condemnation. You got to know the Bible. There is therefore now no condemnation. To those who are in Christ. See, you ain't got, you can't nobody condemn you for what, see, I won't let nobody condemn me of what I did, watch this, 20 years ago. I'm not in condemnation. I've been so free from that stuff. See, so what am I trying, I said, I said, when I first birthed the church, I'm trying to finish. When I first birthed the church, Pastor Ron, my God, people like me, you, you know what, you know how your pastor, your pastor should be a gangster. Your pastor should be in the prison. Your pastor should be all that. And, and, and one of my members said, that ain't nothing, he that every Sunday. Yeah. But see, but see, people have all type of things. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. I'm being serious, y'all. People got all type of things to say, Stacy, about your pastor. Yeah. But, at, but listen to them. Listen to what they say. Have they said anything about me being a hypocrite since I've been a Christian? No, no, no. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. So, so people can bring up what I did, mother, 20 years ago, but have they brought up something? Hey, what, what it's been straight great. consistency, giving God the glory since April the 30th of 1995. Ain't been no hiccups, my God, that's going to make you not want to follow me. Ain't nothing going on giving God the glory in my life, my God, that will come out to make you say he was a hypocrite. The devil is a lie. I'm an open book. And when you open like me, you can't preach like I preach and be a hypocrite. You can't preach like I preach and be a hypocrite. So why did I just say that? Not to boast on me, but to show you. There is no condemnation when you've been set free and delivered and you ain't doing the stuff you used to do. There should not be no condemnation. There's only condemnation when you're still doing what you're not supposed to be doing. That's when it becomes condemnation because you're in sin and you're lying. Sin brings shame. There ain't no shame when you ain't in sin. Mm. Oh, my God. And number five. I cer certain behaviors worsen over time. Certain behaviors, Tanya, worsen over time. Yeah. This is when you know you're yoked and you're in bondage. When this thing ain't getting better, it's getting worse. Oh, my God, my God. Oh, when it's getting worse. So if you're sitting in this ministry and stuff is getting worse, that means you're in bondage. But you can be free if you choose to be free. God said, I set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life. All you got to do is choose life. When you leave the sanctuary every day, go home and choose life. You're going to have to make some decisions to get unyoked, my God. You're going to have to make some decisions in your mind, my God, to walk up out of bondage, my God. A lot of our bondage, thank you, Holy Ghost, is our clothes. A lot of our bondage is in our mind. It's strongholds, my God. It ain't got nothing to do with the external. Everything is going on that got us in bondage and yoke is internal in our mind. Everything is in the mind. Get free in your mind. I promise you all this stuff that's vexing you, uh, it'll go away immediately. When God freed me, my mind addiction was gone. Been gone. I don't even think about that mess. And I still pray every day, Lord, help me stay clean and sober. Keep me clean. Oh my God, I don't ever want to get so full of myself where I think I don't need to cry out to the Lord to maintain my sobriety. Yeah. Yeah. But my addiction was in my mind. When my mind got free, baby, I was free and been free because I'm in the Word. Wash your mind with the word, baby. You, it's certain addictions you can't overcome until God interrupts it. God, there's a place in you that only God can feel. We're trying to get clean and sober. 12 steps and 18 steps. Get clean and sober through Christ. Yeah. And I'm not talking about drugs and alcohol. Get clean and sober and get your addiction broken through reading his word. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Pastor Ron, you shouldn't have prayed for my last thing. We are driven. This is when you know you're in bondage. When you are driven by impulses and desires. You are driven by impulses and desires. Look at me, daughters and young men. Look at me, Isaac. What is his name, Dean Jabari? Jacquez. We, not just y'all, we are in bondage to different desires and different stuff that drive us. So anything that's driving you that you cannot stop doing, you got to tell yourself it's a bondage. And you got to say, God, help me overcome this. Anything that you're doing that if somebody found out will bring shame or get you in trouble, that you shouldn't be doing it. 
But they probably saying, but pastor, you need to be telling my mom and daddy that. I did. Trust me. I think I'm going to let the baby stay next week, too, because I'm dealing with generational stuff. Yeah. Words that are spoken. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get the church free, man. Yeah. Mm. Are you driven by impulses? Strongholds, yokes, and bondage can, can vary from minor to moderate. Some strongholds are moderate. I mean minor. Some bondages are minor. And some yokes are minor. And some of them is moderate or even to severe. So you got to begin to look at the things that God has revealed to you. Is this minor, moderate, or severe? Minor, moderate, or severe. Extreme forms include mindsets that greatly hinder us spiritually, socially, and physically. If this bondage, stronghold, or yoke is hinder you spiritually, socially, some people, I got a, mm, I got a loved one, my God, that cannot associate, he's not sociable. Life has messed him up. He don't socialize with nobody. He's a hermit. We're trying to figure out why is it that you can't keep a job? Why is it that you can't do the things you need to do? You don't want to have no contact with society, pretty much with people. See what I'm trying to say? Life can mess you up. Yeah, yeah. We got to pray that God break the spirit of bondage, even over our children. Some of our children won't even socialize the church. They just sit off to themselves. They wound it. Yeah. Life has wounded them. Mm -hmm. And some of that has been transferred from you to them. Yeah, yeah. Any yoke, any stronghold, if it's affecting you socially, where you, can't, you don't want to be, some people won't work in the ministry because they don't want to social. They don't want to be social. You can come to a church, Pastor, and hide. When I say hide, you can come fit in, but you don't have to be social. Yeah. You'll yeah. be here every Sunday, every Wednesday, six o'clock, but you're not sociable. Yeah. You're speaking all that, but any outside events and all that type of stuff, they, they don't want to be a part of it because some people are just wounded. It's not that they're the devil. Just people are wounded. Yeah. They're in bondage. Some people have been locked up in closets as kids. Some people has been beaten so bad to where my God and told that they was ugly and, and you know what I'm trying to say and, and some of their teeth and got oh my, my, because of stuff that has happened from abuse and so that they yeah. won't smile. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Bondage mentally. Yeah. Stuff has happened. And it ain't but mm, it's just life, man. Yeah. That's why you can't it's dangerous to sit in church. It's dangerous to profess to be a Christian and not get free. 